Welcome back. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. alleging on social media that former President Donald Trump and his allies reached out to him as potentially being Trump's VP pick. However, the Trump campaign has denied the allegation. So Republican strategist Eric Mitchell, Democratic strategist Robin Byro, and former federal prosecutor Doug Burns joins us. Doug's here on set. Eric, do you believe that the Trump campaign asked RFK to be his running mate? Yeah, let's look at the post here. It says, President Trump calls me an ultra-left radical. I'm so liberal that his people asked me to be his VP. I respectfully decline the offer. I am against President Trump, and President Biden can't win. Judging by his new website, it looks like President Trump knows who he can actually beat. He can beat him. Uh, so, Eric, what do you think? Did, uh, do you think there's some truth to this? I actually don't. I think this is gamesmanship. RFK Jr. knows if he says anything, obviously talking about Trump is good. It's good media, right? Anything because, you know, the Trump will can't will respond. But everybody knows RFK scares the Biden regime beyond a reasonable doubt, because that's why they're doing so much to bring up the other Kennedys. Just a few weeks ago at the White House, they brought all the Kennedys except RFK Jr. to the White House. They are scared of him. And he's just playing the game, right? He knows that he's the outsider looking in, and he's got to cause shockwaves on both sides. Yeah. We've been following a list of potential names floated around. It didn't really seem like RFK made the short list, <laughs> list for any of these Trump conversations. No. So not sure exactly where that's originating from. All right, Doug, we have to ask you, though, about Trump and his criminal trial. No court today. Seven jurors have been selected. We still need to find 11 more. We can maybe go through some of the jurors. Uh, we're learning that the four-person has been selected, which can you talk to us about that, the fact that there's already a four-person without the full jury picked? Why is that the Yeah, case? that is kind of interesting. Thing. Usually you pick the whole jury and then you designate somebody as the four person. I'm not sure, honestly, why they would do that. But, you know, it's not any big earth shattering uh, significance. They have your four person. That's the one who kind of runs things in the jury room. OK, and they've already been selected. Um, we went through we talked earlier about some of these other qualifications to our attorneys. Yeah. So what does that tell you about how they might be viewing this case? No, that is interesting. I myself sat on a jury in Nassau County about 10 years ago, and that was interesting. And, and it was very positive because nobody looked at me uh, under the idea that I was an attorney. We were just there to find the facts, not the law. We were going to apply the law the way the judge explained it to us. And I was actually very, very impressed. But, you know, there's mixed arguments about whether you want attorneys on a panel. It can be good. It can be bad. Um, not a big surprise based on how good your case is, essentially. Right. And, and a lot of these jurors, before they got selected here, were, went through this prequal. Qualification. They right. had to go through. They had 42 questions that they had to be that they were asked. That was from the judge, but they're. One of the questions wasn't who they voted for. Are they Democrat, Republican? That was not asked. My other question I have for you is why didn't they ask who they voted for in terms of the Manhattan DA? Did they? That was not brought up. Did they vote for Alvin Bragg, who brought forward the charges against Donald Trump? Well, that's a very viable double standard question, obviously, and we see double standards all throughout what's going on. So the point is, if you're going to ask uh, political questions in one direction, then you should ask them in the other. I always make the same sort of joke, which is imagine you're on trial for bank robbery, right, robbing a federally insured institution, and you say to a juror, are you a Democrat? It's ridiculous. It's only because this case is so political. Yeah. Um you know, uh, Robin, we've been watching, sort of learning about all the players in this court case. And we're learning about the judge, right? And, and how he's probably not the biggest Trump fan, quite frankly. There are going to be a lot of cast of characters when it comes to the witnesses, Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, uh, some people, blast from the past. They're, they're coming all out in full force here. And you got to keep in mind the setting of it all. This is in Manhattan. It's New York City here, predominantly Democratic voters. Uh, Robin, talk to us about the trial here, how it might appear uh, when it comes to fair, the fairness factor. Emma, I'm glad you asked that question. You know, I'm a Democrat, but I, I believe strongly in the Constitution, which guarantees you the right to be tried by a jury of your peers. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I have questions about how that's going to be handled because Donald Trump's a billionaire and he's a, a celebrity. Uh, so is it going to be tried? You know, are, are his jurors going to be all billionaire celebrities? No. Um, but the judge, yeah, there's some questions about his daughter specifically. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the jurors uh, who will be deciding former President Tr Donald Trump's fate. Um, and I was heartened, actually, to, to, to hear some of the questions that were asked and their responses. Uh, they seem to me like they will, at least these few that have been selected, seem to be fair, impartial jurors 
And that's what we need in this instance, Emma. Yeah, and, and a big part of this, too, in, in the selection is the social media. Uh, so w once these jurors do get past that pre-qualification of the 42 questions uh, and they get seated, well, then they start going down the social media rabbit hole. And I want to go back to Eric on this, but Trump's team, they're really having to, they're going do dive deeper on all of these jurors, potential jurors, and they have to do it on the spot, too. And, and that's what's fascinating about this case that really should be up on Broadway and have music and, all, and dialogue and singing because of just bringing up the blast from the past, social media and being on the fly. But the one thing you notice about all these jurors is most of them find President Trump to be fascinating, right? The way that he can speak his mind, which fits in well, because it's true. It's what the man does quite well, speak his mind. So you're noticing these jurors all have that same thing in common. As I was going through the jury list, they all find him fascinating. Whether they voted for him or not, I still don't think that's a proper jury question, but I'm not running the show there. But it's just interesting how they have to jump on social real quick and go see. And everybody lives on social. So it's interesting to go find, are they just saying that to get onto the jury pool or they actually believe what they're saying? And they're, you know, they don't watch the news. Like you look at four of them said, I don't really watch the news. And so you're just like, OK, you get your news from TikTok. Interesting. So is that true? Or are they just saying that to get on there? Right. Yeah. Everyone can be impartial when you can also be a juror on Trump's criminal trial and have a major say in the future, potentially exactly, the, the right? return to the White House for a man, or could he be a convicted felon? I mean, what a story to tell. Uh, you do hope that, of course, uh, they answer their civic duty and are truly um, yes. unbiased. Yeah. Eric and Robin and Doug, thank you all so much for coming on. Great discussion, as always. We'll speak soon. Still